when I was uh, about six years old. I walked out one spring day and on, the, uh, on these plants, on these lily plants near my house, there was this um, two of these wonderful big moths that we have here. And I just didn't know things like this existed. We now have records for about uh, 600,000 species. And uh, so the key pieces of information that we're assembling is first of all that sequence that, that tags to each species that we've encountered and images of those species and the distributions of those species where they're found on the planet. I'm pretty sure we can guarantee that come uh, before the midst of this century, in fact, I'll predict that by 2045, we will have completed the registration uh, with this DNA-based approach for every species that lives on our planet that humanity has managed to encounter between now and then. So uh, we see an end game. Uh, so in 2010, we initiated this uh, project, uh, the International Barcode of Life Project, and uh, it involved 25 nations, thousand, more than a thousand researchers. So it's people around the world uh, going to places where they're collecting, uh, gathering specimens, and uh, send them to us. Here in Canada, we've had our own collection team. In fact, we've recruited the school kids of Canada to uh, aid in this effort, and they have been hugely productive. So they uh, set out traps in their schoolyards, find out what lives in their schoolyard, and get a sense of um, looking after the life around them. I just wish we had this information from when I was a child to, to look back 50 years and, and say, what was living in my schoolyard? The school's still there. We have no reference of what was living in the schoolyard, but we do today, and so I think that future of uh, being able to know what we're doing to the planet and hopefully developing a, a, a sense that w of knowledge that would allow us to take care of things better. DNA became accessible in the late 1990s as PCR developed. You could take small things and get plenty of DNA to sequence from them. And uh, so that was in the back of my mind. And one day I was walking through a a grocery store and I looked at the barcodes on the shelves and thought, why can't we tell things apart with little slices of DNA? Inspired by that sort of very simple uh, thought, uh, went back and tried it. And I turned on the moth light in my backyard that I hadn't had on for uh, a very large number of years and uh, harvested a few hundred species that I had collected when I was a child and I knew them. And then we grabbed a little piece of DNA and we could tell every one of those species apart. And that was my sort of, okay, we've done 200 species, that surely will work for all the species on the planet. And um, that was a big, big presumption. And, um, but that's how it started. I think humanity at some point is going to wake up and say, it's a lonely planet. We want those birds, we want these animals, we should be doing better. And so I'm, I'm hoping by providing this biodiversity monitoring system, that this causes humanity to take more care. The worst thing um, that might happen is we're gonna lose many species, but let's save their DNA. Then we can read the books of life. So I look forward to that future where I go walking through the woods with my grandson and we just touch a plant, we just touch a caterpillar and, the, and our little sequencing device immediately tells us it's this species, this is where it's been reported before and that Human, humanity rebuilds a relationship. You know, in times past, we live with nature. We depended on nature for our food 10,000 years ago, right? And now we've gotten so far from that. So uh, my hope is that this new technology breeds a new intimacy for humanity with nature, and it'll cause us to think more about it. <laughs>